Good morning and welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts. It's early, but I've been putting off this recording for so long, um, not really putting it off, just so much other things going on in life. I decided to get up early, I've got my coffee, and we're just going to do this and hopefully it won't be the worst ever. But um, <clears throat> Clans has a couple of uh, it's got like a like a some online AI that you can do, um, and so I thought I'd run through the uh, solo version as it is uh, in the game very quickly, very 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 quickly. Um, so I'm not even gonna try to really uh, particularly win this game. I will kind of try, um, but you have up at the top we have the the goals and the contracts, and then we have the purchase, uh, the trade um, board, and that changes every round. I was playing with Clan McKenzie. I played about three games prior um, just to get a good feel for it. Got my starting tile. There's my money. Um, so one of the things with this version of the game is you just put out with it, and this is the one that comes with the box, you just fill in all the number one spaces. So you can't buy number one spaces on the board. That costs less money. You can't use the outer track. And after that, you're just, just trying to keep up, uh, pretty much follow the game and get as much money and score the most points that you can. That's the goal. It's, um, it's fairly challenging. I would argue, um, to get into the higher levels, uh, what I think I have found, um, from reading some forums and look at some other folks, uh, the temptation is to try to take the, uh, hold this up to there. It's to try to take the clan and really maximize that clan. And you do want to do whatever the clan does for their special ability. Uh, and in this case, producing beer and let it coming off. But the temptation is to do that in the first round and start building up toward that and then think, oh, that's going to maximize later. And each clan is pretty unique and it's a different part of the game you're really kind of going for. But in this case, you really kind of want to build up an economy before you do anything else. Get all your um, the fellas out on the board that are these uh, meeple guys and and so at the beginning of the game I mean I'm starting with 60 um, and you're you have to pay for the land and you have to pay for the 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 shop or worker that you're putting on the board uh, as well so it can be pretty challenging at the onset of the game and I'm kind of looking at the market board to see uh, what I might want to go after and where I might want to put my person so that I could potentially fulfill a contract in the first round. You don't necessarily want to go after contracts in the first round, although you can. Getting one you definitely want to do because it will give you um, some uh, it'll give you at least that one contract and they give you five, you get five coins, uh, for getting that first contract. So just seeing that there is a contract I could potentially fulfill if I have a, uh, meeple on the board here, uh, I wouldn't normally want to spend, uh, quite as much, but I am going to spend, um, let's see, do I want to spend 12? If I spend 10, uh, 13. If I spend 13 and get seven, I can put my mountaineer in a mountain there. I don't know. There's a, there's a corner here that's kind of cut off, um, that I had a hard time getting all the way on, but I'm going to put my mountaineer there because it's near a tile that I want to go after. Um, and then I wonder if it'll be just beneficial to go after the mountains here more so than anything else. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and get another 
fella here on a mountain. I'm going to lay them down so you can kind of see them better. So those are my starting. That's how you start. And then I can just kind of get into the game. Well, my plan is to get this contract in round one. That's going to give me five coins. I really don't want to spend a lot of money, but I do want to get as much money as I can. Uh, I'm going to have to get my shipping up, but I do get a free upgrade up there. The problem is the free upgrade is not going to help me much right now. So that might be obsolete. Uh, I really just want to get these guys out, but I want to get this contract. So to get the to get my shipping where I want it to be, I'm gonna have to get it up two. So I know I'm gonna have to spend eight to get my shipping over rivers and then get it over to uh, to where I can cross a lock. Uh, and I'm basically paying that just real quickly, um, just so you can see kind of how the game works. I'm gonna use that uh, special tile. And I'm going to turn in my cheese and I will get two beer instead. And with that two beer, I'm going to fulfill this contract. And that's going to give me, hold that up. Um, that's going to give me 10, of, 10 money and 10 coins. I'm going to get two, the tobacco is going to go up two. And then uh, at the end, when we start doing scoring, I'll have a hops there too. Ops will give me basically one point. So I got to turn in my uh, beer there. I'm not going to get that. Uh, it is generally good to go after money early in the game, but there's only a little bit of money here. I'd say land tends to be kind of next, and after that, it's whatever. Um, but I kind of want to go after a contract I think is more likely to be fulfilled, and since I make beer, uh, and this one also has a little money. I'm going to go after that one, which is going to give me five more money. And so now I'm probably wanting to pretty hard and fast go after the, uh, getting these mountaineers out and getting them, um, flipped over. I'm going to go ahead and pay, uh, 10 coins. Oh, okay, so this might be, that actually costs 15, not 10, I think. Oh, no, no, it does cost 10. It costs 10, but this is where I could use this one over here. And if I want to flip that, because that gives me three victory points immediately. And then I go and get one upgrade uh, not necessarily for free. I'm going to get this upgrade so that I can make more money. Uh, and I just have to pay five for it instead of 10, which saves me a little, which is not bad. Um, but that means instead of right now, it would have been 18 income, but it's going to be 24 instead. And then I'm going to go ahead and pay to get the last one out. So I'll get 32 income right out of the gate. And I would rather have a forest space, I'd rather have a different space, but we really want to generate that income. And so I'm going to go a whole 12, uh, even though I don't really want to spend quite that much on it, but it's probably worth it in the long run for the money. I'm going to do that. Now that's, that's a fair, that's a round one, um, which is not bad because I did get a contract fulfilled and didn't have to spend anything for it, but I've used up two of my, my port bonuses and, oh, I could have done one other thing. Do I want to? That's the thing. I could, I could have sold this, um, but I don't necessarily need to, and it's not necessarily going to benefit me this round to have done so. So I won't worry about it. Okay, so that's the end of round one. And as you can see, if you're playing solo, pretty quick. It's not, it does not take a long time. Um, 
you just have to reset the market and figure out what is going to two, three, uh, what's going to disappear from that market over there from the uh, contracts. So basically one, two, three, three of those things went up, nothing went down. And then we take off the plus three contract that disappears from the market. And then we go on the round two. Uh, I do have to get my income, which is going to be 32 plus four. So 36. And I did not produce anything at all. But part of the reason for getting those guys out early in the game is you're going to produce 36 every round. And, and that over the course of the game, that's going to be worth a lot of money. Um, so you really want to get it out early. And then I can start, you want to get that economy going as fast as you can the first several rounds um, before you really get moving in other directions. Um, so I'm not even going to worry about my contracts right now. Uh, I just want to get my economy up and running as fast as I can. So what I'm looking for on the board now is the next, kind of the next closest forest spaces uh, from what I can tell. Um, and so we have uh, 11. We can put a forest there. Uh, or uh, rather, yeah, forester, a forester. Um, and I'd really like to get another forester in there. Hmm. Huh. When I do get a contract, so I'm going to need to make some stuff up there. Oh, just trying to debate the best method. Or if I can get this, if I can get to this, then I could potentially get another upgrade. But I don't know if I can do it all in one. Because that's going to cost me 11 to get this guy out. Um, and it's probably going to behoove me to go ahead and pay 10 for this upgrade because that's going to ultimately give me quite a bit of money the rest of the game. And money is king in this game. I, I might go ahead and because I can sell this for eight or for five, I'm going to go ahead and sell this yarn uh, because I have enough uh, that actually gives me 12 and I can get my last uh, forester out on the board. So now I have my economy fully built up. Uh, I've got no money. I'm going to go to the next round. That's, as you can see, that's very fast. I'm going to go ahead and stick another tile out there and adjust these markets. Uh, so bread, one, two, three. Um, milk, um, it's, it's absolute value here. So one, two, three. Instead of going up another three, it's going to go down three. And cheese is going to go down one. And then our plus one tile is going to disappear here. And if you end up hearing banging on a door, that's my cat meowing. But I can't let my cat out, even no matter how much he meows, because he will go and wake up the entire family. And at 4.45 in the morning, they'd be very angry at me. We don't want that. Okay, so round two. I'm not producing any other goods, but I am getting 32, 42, 52, uh, 56 money. So I've now got a very handy income, pretty much just about the most income I could get. And we're on round three, which is not, oh, and I forgot to do victory points on round one. Um, let's see, I had all the, I had all the one forest guy and three. So I would have gotten two, four, six, eight, ten victory points at the end of round one, which would have put me at 13. And then round two, I had zero processed goods. So I would have gotten no points for that. And round three, we're looking at upgrades. So 
right now I've got two, three, four upgrades. Um, so we got to use this economy to start building our stuff here. Now I can purchase wheat um, for the purpose of creating beer, or I could put wheat out on the board, but wheat out on the board costs like, it's gonna cost me at minimum 20 and probably more. Um, so purchasing wheat is, is likely going to be the better option. So I might just wait and see how many of my other things I can get out on the board uh, because making beer will actually generate me income and I want income. So let's see. Um, so what we really want to do is just put beer out uh, as cheaply as possible, probably. And so let's pay 13 and we'll put one here. Um, I'll pay another 13 and we'll put another beer here. Um, the more beer we can produce, the better. Um, we do have several meat contracts. It looks like there's bread on a couple of contracts. There's cheese on a couple of contracts. So, uh, milk is not too bad to buy. I do want to send my guy here and I'm going to purchase two wheat so that when, when it comes to production, I can turn that wheat into beer. So that's something I'm going to do. Now the question is, do I try to get another um, something on the table? I'm going to want to make another yarn. Um, so I might as well send down to nine and get, get a sheep out because that will let me start uh, doing some yarn there. Um, and I could, the upgrade isn't gonna be immediately beneficial at this point in the game, but it will later. So I might as well go ahead and get another two lock upgrade because that'll help me expand into different areas. And do I want to get a salesman now or do I want to get one later? I'm going to eventually want to sell beer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get one now. So, cause that gives me an upgrade. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six upgrades. So we'll go there and we get this upgrade and um, for production, we're going to turn our wheat in and get beer and we're going to get one yarn. And every time we make beer, that gives us three coins per beer, plus we get our 56 income. Um, so we'll grab those and then we have to reset the market. Um, so wheat, one, two, three. And again, on these die, I don't know if you see it, but it's got a plus and a minus, but you do the absolute value uh, when you're moving in the market uh, because if it's up, it's already up over the middle, it goes down. And if it's down, it goes, it goes up and you never do the same thing twice. So uh, if something already has gone down, then you just re-roll it until you get one that, um, that hasn't moved yet. And then the last bit is the contract that uh, on the die. So then the contracts are divided into columns and rows with the columns being a minus and a plus column and the rows being one, two, and three. Um, and so since it's negative two, I just go to the minus column and then pick the two out and that's the contract that disappears that round. Okay, so now, we are, and actually my beer can go in the cellar, but I don't, I can't actually sell it. And so now the temptation is also, hey, I've got enough. I could fulfill this contract, but I'll be honest with you, having played this game a few times, 
if you fall into that trap and fulfill the contract, you're like, well, the contacts, contacts, the contracts are cheaper right now. I could buy them for 10 this round instead of 15 next round. Um, I, if I build my economy, I'll actually have a lot more money to buy and sell contracts later. In the last round, not to mention my beer will actually give me some money coming off of my, my thing here. And I really want to build up my beer more. So that is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to get my, my salesman back, tradesman. And so last round, let's see. No, this is not last round. Just kidding. Um, I'm looking up here to see, cause there, I could, I could trade for, to actually get more beer, um, which would not be unbeneficial to have. And I, that might allow me to trade the contract this round, which actually might be worth it. Um, hmm. Well, bread, beer, and cows. That's probably the way to go. Um, and do I really want to make wheat at all or just purchase it? Hmm. Because if I get another salesman here, which doesn't hurt to have, um, And then I could eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I could pay, pay that to get a bread out here. And now I'm close enough that I could take the port bonus. Um, if I do trade that, well, what I could do for the port bonus, if I pay three, and I'm just doing this fast, so I'm not nearly as, not thinking it through quite as well, but I'm going to go to go ahead and use this port bonus up here and trade in that. And I'm actually going to get a bread and a beer for that port bonus because I might use the bread here in a minute and it gives me an extra beer. Actually, no, I'm not going to get the bread. I'm going to get two beer because that beer is not going to give me three for getting it. Um, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I could, Ooh, this, and this is where it gets a little tricky. You know, I, I was thinking about doing that contract, but I think what actually might be better is if I sell both of these beers and get 22, that's going to help me build up for the last round. So I'm actually going to do that. And I'm not 100% sure I even need this bonus down here, but I do know I want to spread out around the whole area here. Uh, that's going to help me quite a bit. Um, so uh, let's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, let's do 13. Um, and we'll put a bread here uh, on that area. And this might be a good time to consider a wheat. Uh, do we have a place we can buy wheat cheap? Oh, there's there. That's it. For 20, we can actually put a wheat right here. Uh, that's not so bad. Um, we still need to purchase wheat. Um, but I'm actually debating if building another one wouldn't hurt. But wheat's pretty cheap right now, so I am actually going to purchase wheat, uh, which is only cost me eight. Uh, it's going to move that up twice, but I can get two wheat for eight, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I have what I need there, and I want to set myself up for getting contracts and whatnot, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's go 13 to get a cow out here. And is it worth it making cheese? There's a few things with cheese. I don't know if I really want to pursue the cheese yet. Um, yarn might actually be 
more beneficial. Um, but the cheese I could sell, especially if it goes up in value. So can I sell the bread? Um, yeah, it's usually good to make a high end product there. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have exactly 12. So I'll go ahead and put a cheese factory out here and then we will do uh, production. So there's a little, there's a little board here that tells you the order you do things in. Um, first you see how many folks you have on the outside. I've got one, two, three. Uh, you don't count the very edge. Four, five. So I'm going to get, it's for every two. So I'm going to get eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for that one. And then we do production. So I'm going to get my 56 coins. Um, and let me see, did I do that right? Yeah, there's my 56 coins. And then I'm going to produce two wheat, but I'm going to use those wheat and I'm going to use this wheat. And I'm actually going to produce uh, beer and bread. And that beer is going to move over and both the beers will give me a little extra money. I'm taking the milk and producing cheese and I'm producing one yarn. So, and then I need to get my guys back and, oh, let's see. We've done production. Oh, contracts. I forgot to do the contracts. So let's see. Refill the contracts and let's do the market. So we're going to go bread plus one. Actually, it goes minus one because it was up high. That's going to go down two, which might help me this round possibly. And cheese being in the middle is one, two, three. So it went down three. That's, that's awful. Um, wanted it to go up. And then minus three is the one that disappears. And so that goes off the board and this is our last round. So you can kind of see that, I mean, you could think through a lot of things and spend a lot of time, but the game is rather quick. Uh, if you're just flying through it and even if you're not flying through it, it's not the longest game, uh, playing this way. And then a minute I'll reset it for the other, for the, the next style, but let's see what I can finish with here. Got a lot of money, got a lot of stuff. Um, you do get one last production round and you do get points for what you produce. So it doesn't hurt to produce some nice goods in the later rounds. Uh, but what we've got to do is we've got to try to get some contracts taken care of. That is important. Um, and so that being said, we're going to, we're going to take that beer off and that's going to give us seven um, coins because he took it off our seller and I'm going to trade these two and I'm going to get this contract, which is going to get me, I think it's two sugar cane and three coins, which doesn't seem like much. And we'll do that and we'll fulfill that contract. So now it's really a, we have to buy a new contract most likely. And part of this is going to be seeing uh, what can we fulfill quickly and what gives us money too. I have a cheese, I have a coin, I have bread. So I need one more yarn and I can get uh, 10 and an upgrade, which doesn't hurt. Um, but I can only buy yarn one time. So if I don't buy it all now, I'm not going to get it, which is unfortunate. Um, the thing is, if I go for that contract up at the top, so I don't want to miss out on yarn. That's the thing. Uh, I'm not sure that's the contract I want to go for, but it might be. Um, Cause these would disappear, but actually that contract would only require me to get a bread. It might be easier. And these are the only contracts we have, so Ooh, that's a tough choice. It does get cotton on the board. I think we are, ah, man, 
That one's going to be easier to go for. I think I'm just going to get the one. I might regret this uh, because it's going to cost me four. Um, I'm just going to get the one yarn. I'm only going to go after that one contract. I have to pay 15 for this contract here. Um, and then to fulfill it, I got to turn in these items and bread and cheese that I have and fulfill that contract. I get a upgrade and, uh, well, actually I wonder if the better upgrade wouldn't be just getting my lock upgraded. And then I get 10 coins, which is why I went after that contract so I can get that money back. And it's very helpful. Um, that one is not bad. I could get that and get a land back. Uh, so that fulfills that contract. I'm going to have to purchase another contract. And I think this is the one that's going to be easiest to fulfill for me. I do need a bread. Um, so if I purchase a bread for 10, I'm just going to leave it there. I have to butcher a lamb. <clears throat> and I have to turn in my beer and that will fulfill. And there's my bread. I just left my bread in there that I just purchased. And then I get this. So, and I think I forgot what was supposed to go up in that last one. Three sugar, uh, one, two, three. And this is cotton, one, two, three. So that goes up and I get to buy a land for uh, free. Uh, so if there's a six around here, that's the thing to buy. Um, but I also want to spread out my territory as much as I can. That's very important as well. Uh, I don't know that there's a thing that's really getting that lamb out of there actually helps increase my, uh, where I'm at. So I might just pay eight and put this lamb back out uh, here so that it expands my territory a bit um, <clears throat> and you know what actually let's go here because that's six and that connects that's going to get me connected to a few things i believe um no it's not down here is still the best Actually, I need to go there. That one's easy to connect, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right. So we've got that. Um, the question is, do we want to just make goods? Uh, is that going to help us the most right now? Uh, I don't have any wheat. Wheat's expensive. Um, a, that would be 20. So for the sake of speed, I'm going to go 22 and go ahead and make a wheat farm here. So I can definitely produce those things and don't have to buy the wheat. Uh, which leaves me with very little cash and not an ability to get another contract. Um, maybe I should have fulfilled a contract at the beginning of the game. Don't know. Let's see. Uh, we could get an upgrade, uh, or cause we only have five, six, seven, eight coins left. So I don't think we definitely can't buy a contract. We don't have anything to sell. Um, and I don't think we can put anything out on the board. So I think that's pretty much game. Um, and I probably did terribly. So, uh, settlements is a thing that I look at. I've got one, two, three. Those are all connected cause I have locks Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Actually, that's not even connected. I think I cheated earlier in the game. Somehow. I don't know. I don't know how I did that. 
I think I was supposed to go here and I and I didn't earlier on. And I should have done that differently. So we're gonna say seven. Uh, so I'm not gonna get a settlement bonus. I did not get enough. Let's see, I got four contracts. That's not enough for the contract bonus. Uh, so basically it's gonna come down to points. Um, this gives me a point, uh, or I guess two, each of the wheat farms counts as two. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm gonna get eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that's gonna be my VP for that. And we'll go ahead and collect these guys back. I uh, don't have to worry about contracts because we're starting a new phase. Um, coins, I'm gonna get 56. Um, and I would create, I would make two beer. So 758, 9, 6, 6, 1, that'd be 62. Uh, six, three, four, five, six, seven, six, nine, seventy. Uh, and the ways I'm doing it that way is because you get uh, for every ten a victory point. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no point in gathering it. I'm going to get two points for each processed good I have. So it's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and each raw good I have will be one or regular good. I would have one of those. Um, and any other points? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, I got to do the contracts. So uh, the first thing I can do is just do the hops. I got one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and hops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, Make sure I counted everything there. I did. All right. And so that is, uh, before I do the export bonuses, that's pretty much my base score of 60. Let's see. I went 30. I went 60. So I'm at 66. Um, but now I do the export bonuses. So tobacco being the least exported thing is worth the most. Uh, it's going to be five points per. I have two. So that's going to be 10 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then uh, cotton is going to be four, and I have three, I believe. So it's going to be 12 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the sugar cane is going to be the most there. Uh, at five times three is 15. So one, two, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I ended up with one hundred and thirteen, which is at best newbie. I'm not even gonna look it up. It's not good. Um, it's like I might have gotten newbie. I'm not even sure if I got that. So uh, there, there's some ways. Uh, certainly, as you if you watch this, you probably saw some things that you might have done differently. I was doing it very quickly. Um, but as far as reset goes, I'm going to move on to that uh, because we're going to use the uh, standard, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm not going to change a lot of things out, but in, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the game that's online where you can click through some things uh, and play like you're playing against a regular opponent and you can kind of decide what you think about that. And I'm going to do a couple of turns there so you can kind of see how that works. Um, but that's, uh, that's the, one of the things about the solo version slash versions of this game. I think there's actually three. Um, if you go through B BGG forums and whatnot, um, <clears throat> I'm only going to show the one and I'm just kind of doing this so you can see the reset. But uh, I am Grabbing a random starter tile, I'm keeping the same faction, although that is something you could differentiate very easily. I'm going to keep the same tiles for the sake of ease um, for the, the port bonuses. That is something that you could quite easily change to uh, better, you know, just to create a differentiated experience from one game to the next. Um, and I'm since I'm using the same clan, that's another thing I could change. Um, so there's quite a few things that you could manipulate in this game to make each game uh, slightly different. 
the one thing I think is kind of the same is you really got to build that economy up. Um, if you don't build that economy up, uh, you're going to have a hard time. But I did not do it the best way possible. I just did it all out money, getting my guys out on the board. And I probably should have focused more on contracts once I got all the guys out because that's my big money maker there. And if I had focused on contracts early, I might have gotten the contract bonus and I might have even gotten the settlement bonus chasing after it more. So in this game, I start with a wheat, a um, yarn, and a, and a beer and 55 points so your starting tiles are different every game um, that's a thing you could draft if you're playing multiplayer um, and then i believe and i gotta leave my camera running but i need to click off the screen so that i can pull up the uh the deal that i go off of here so you prepare the export board, the map, the port tiles, the scoring tiles in the market as usual. The Automa starts with two shipping upgrades. Oh, I didn't get all the pieces out. Okay. We might not play through as much as this, I thought. Uh, two shipping upgrades and they get two merchants as usual. No goods, no clan tile and one meeple of neutral color that's placed just to the left and above the sheep column of the automa's player board oh um so if the automa has a player board the neutral worker just goes there no goods no clan tile two merchants uh so that's not too bad let's just pretend these uh, let's pretend these two meeples are the merchants uh for the sake of argument and then they don't actually use all of these other things. They're just gonna come off. Um, no goods, the human player starts the game. So I would take a turn. I would start putting out my tiles. And if I click new game here, it says choose starting difficulty for the Automa. An easier setting gives the Automa less starting money than a harder setting. So basically they start with more money. You can, they can start with as low as 50 or as high as 75. Um, so I'm just gonna put it at 60 for kicks and giggles, even though I don't really plan to play this game. Uh, Automa deploys four of its workers before you deploy two workers. Oh, so I'm gonna get the first turn, but they get to deploy four workers right out. Usually you do two in a regular game and there's one clan that gives you three. Uh, the Automa starts in map module A and throws the price die. Okay. So the, the map is divided into, uh, this is uh, like A, B, C, and D. It's actually four things that come together to form that map. So this game is actually, it fits in a rather small box given how much game there actually is in it, which is pretty good. So a plus deploys on the cheapest text with a cost of one or two maximum, maximum that is the closest to the central lock, okay? And a minus, it's the cheapest hex that's closest to the port. Interesting. This way, it deploys four workers, one in each map module. Okay. And it deploys two workers close to ports and two workers close to the, the central lock. Theoretically, but if you're, oh, I see. Well, you throw the dice each time. The price die. These are the these are the price die. Um, so probably not holding that up in the right place. But uh, so you're throwing that, and um, oh, I lost my meeple there. Ah, broken meeple. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's early, and jokes are not good this early. Um, so if it's deployed two workers close to ports already, it automatically deploys the other two workers close to the central lock and vice versa. I see. Okay. The landscape on the respective hex hexes dictates, dictates, dictate which type of worker the auto has to deploy there. Okay. Um, and so then it goes on. Um, there's two changers to capture more data so that we can continue and ensure it's balanced. There's a pass button. If I pass before the autumn, automa, I click the pass button 
and we figure out how many extra turns the automa takes until the next round. But if it passes first, I don't have to worry about that. Um, at the conclusion of the game on the screen with the link to the Google form scoring information, the pass rate figures will be visible in the form of five numbers and copy these numbers, click the scoring button button, and then paste the figures into the, so you really got to pay attention to the, the thing here. And then it gets into a screen, which is unfortunately I can't, um, I could, let's see. Maybe, maybe we can uh, adjust our thing here. I'll move my camera and then you can kind of see what I'm seeing. So it's, uh, and I'm sorry for the screen brightness. I'll try to hold it at an angle. Um, so there, this is what it is. So you, we got draw, undo and pass. So you just kind of play the game, I guess. And then I don't know what draw does. Simply, oh, you're drawing an Automa card, I see. The Automa simply skips this turn and does nothing. It is then the turn of the human player. And then you draw, and then the Automa does a thing. Does the Automa have at least seven money to attempt to expand an action? Let's say yes. So then it'll tell you uh, in the map module, which map model is either A or C. The neutral meeple is plus five. Um, Tiebreakers port bonus. If not able to expand, then Automa attempts the next main action. So it's going to try to expand with a neutral meeple, I guess. Huh. And it's going to pay the money to go. Okay. Eh, it's not too bad. Um, there's not really. Uh, I didn't see an explanation of all the symbols here, but if you know the game well enough, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I don't know what this 10 means. Um, and neutral maple plus five, I'm not 100% sure what that means. Oh, if you click on it, it'll tell you. A tiebreaker if several types of units can be deployed on the same hex. But it said that he didn't use shops. So that's what's interesting. If the Automa doesn't use shops, I'm surprised. Okay. So uh, it's not bad. So if I pass, I'm going to say yes. And what happens? Um, draw, draw, oh, a new contract. Let's see. So I guess I just keep drawing until, and then he can't draw anymore. So, oh, let's see. And let's do that. Draw, yes, draw, no, fulfill contract. Huh, so it just keeps going. It, I thought there was supposed to be a thing that said how many turns the Automa gets, but I didn't see it. I probably just wasn't looking for it because I was going through it quick. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I can see that being reasonably entertaining um, to do that. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Unraveled Gaming. I apologize. My camera video, for whatever reason, just did not make it onto that one. Um, so everything I held up to the camera, it's lost. Uh, I don't know if I deleted it or what, but uh, that was my playthrough of Clans of Caledonia solo version. Um, looking through the screen toward the end there, you can kind of see the on, uh, it's like an online way to play the game so that it feels like you're playing against another player and it's kind of like a card flipping mechanic um, much like maybe the West Kingdom games where you flip a card and the AI does a thing. Uh, very similar to that, except you're clicking a button and then um, it tells you what to do. And there's a certain number of turns the AI gets. And you it's kind of, you know, depending on how you manage your resources, depends on whether you get more or less turns than AI to some degree. Uh, it looks interesting, but I feel like the scoring is very challenging. 
to get the higher scores that are included in the instructions with the base game. Um, so I definitely get why some folks decided to create at least one. I think there's another one online that I, I didn't look at. Um, I personally, after playing through and kind of evaluating that, would prefer just trying to get a better score and manage my economy because I feel like that is quite puzzly and very difficult and challenging to do and just kind of think through how that's going to work out. Um, I believe this uh, game scored. I'll see if I can pull it up on my screen here. Oh, oh yeah, I'm screen capturing, so I can't see the other things, the other files on my screen. So uh, this one ranked pretty high. Uh, this is the fact that it's challenging and the the pieces and the size and the play area. It's you could probably fit that game on a. Uh, just a regular card table, which I think I've done before. Um, and it's a pretty small box, so fairly transportable if you were traveling and you just wanted a solo game to play. Uh, setup's a little bit of probably the biggest hassle. Um, and, and that's reasonable. I mean, given what you get out of that small box and the play experiences, I've got a 3D, uh, 3D printed stuff in the box. So uh, it's not as hard to uh, take down and set up as it might be if I had it in bags. Um, so there are some some options for making that easier, but this is a very good economic game. Lots of variability uh, using different clans, using uh, just reshuffling all the tiles and all the uh, the port bonuses, the starting bonuses, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's a lot of variability throughout the game um, that you could you know, it's got some good replay value, uh, even from a solo experience, not just from a uh, multiplayer experience. So uh, this one probably, I think at rank number two, I'll try to post up the uh, current ranking at the end of this video. Um, assuming this one actually takes, I just a second ago recorded this and didn't have it on the right setting, so I got no sound. So this is like take three, basically, for the face cam. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Um, I do have a Patreon page. I'll try to include that in the comment section. I'd always remember to do that, but uh, would love to uh, have Patreons. But thank you for watching today. If you have questions about my playthrough, um, feel free to make comments about how terribly I did. I'm okay with that. I know I did terribly because I was trying to go really fast and just kind of get uh, a good playthrough so people could see it. Um, but I, uh, I, I also know I made a lot of errors going through the game and, and did things that probably were not the most efficient. Uh, so probably questions about the uh, actual solo experience as it compares with other games that I've played solo so far. Um, would love to hear those more than anything else. Um, and I'll try to post the equation that I use on my uh, metric on my Excel document. And, you know, love to hear some thoughts on that. So thanks for joining me today and have a great afternoon.